Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's take a look at a uh, elevator problem. Let's say that here you are standing in an elevator. And let's say that you're standing on a scale. So a scale looks like this. It's a platform and then there's a spring underneath it. And depending on how much you weigh, the spring compresses a certain amount and that tells you uh, your weight. So if this is the elevator, uh, let's analyze the forces in the case where the elevator is accelerating upwards, when it's moving up at constant speed, and when it's slowing down, it's decelerating. And let's give you uh, some givens. So let's say that uh, your mass is 100 kilograms. And uh, we'll say that the acceleration when it's going up is positive 1.0 meters per second squared. When it's moving up at constant velocity, the acceleration is zero. And when it's slowing down, it is negative 1.0 meters per second squared. So those are the three conditions. And then let's analyze your weight uh, as the elevator accelerates when it's moving at constant velocity and when it's decelerating. All right, so how do we do that? Well, first thing we do is we draw a picture. We got the picture. Second thing is we draw a free body diagram and we write down all our givens. So we have the givens. Let's draw the free body diagram. So U become a dot and there are some forces that are acting on you. There is the normal force N from the scale pushing up on you and there is your weight down, okay? And that is it for the free body diagram. All right, so the third step in our prescription is to now write down Newton's laws. So let's make a little room over here. And let's write down Newton's laws. We have some of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. There's no x forces here, so we're not worried about that, but there are, of course, y forces. What are the y forces? We have n going up, we have mg going down, and all of that is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Are you accelerating up, are you moving at constant velocity, or are you decelerating? So now we can solve this for n. n is just equal to mg plus m-a-y, or n is equal to m times the quantity g plus a-y. This n is how hard the scale is pushing up on you. And so this is in fact what we call weight. Okay. When the elevator is accelerating upwards, then you have a bigger weight than when it is moving at constant velocity or it's decelerating. Let's work out the numbers and see how that takes shape. All right, so we said that the first condition was accelerating upwards. And we said Ay is equal to plus one meter per second squared. So in that region, N is M times G plus AY. We said our mass was 100 kilograms. G is 9.8. We're gonna add one. Both of those are meter per second squared. And if you run those numbers, you get 100 times 10.8 which is 1,080 Newtons. All right, what if you are moving up at constant speed? Well, if you're moving up at constant speed, then of course the acceleration is equal to zero. And now you just plug it into the exact same equation that we had with Ay is equal to zero, and you get, in that case, your weight is 980 Newtons. And if we go to the case where you are decelerating, 
with Ay equals minus one meter per second squared, then you're going to subtract one from 9.8, which is 8.8 .8 times 100, and we end up with n is equal to 880 newtons. Okay, so these are pretty realistic numbers, and this is why when the elevator first moves up, you feel heavy. When it's moving up at constant speed in between floors, you feel your normal weight. And when it's decelerating at the top, you feel a little bit lighter. Okay, hopefully that's clear. If you have any questions, come see me in my office. Cheers.